And so what has happened is this process of the nerve network, the network of nerves that have become our brain, developed more and more and more complexity and modeled the world better and better until it did it so well that with the human brain, we have no, not the slightest idea that what we are seeing is a model of the world. Common sense says that when you look out at the wall there, it's out there in the physical world. But as I hope to show you in a few minutes, what is out there is your mind. That everything we're experiencing, this whole world we see ourselves in, our understanding of it is all our mind. Now there are some important properties that the minds we currently have uh, have because they are the product of biological evolution. Uh, first, our brains are subject to motivation. To give an example, when you are angry, you are prepared to fight. And the anger bias your, biases your perception to see anger in other people. So you know that hostile people will tend to act as if you are hostile, even if you're not, because you are prepared to fight. If you are afraid, uh, you're what we call in English jumpy, which means that you're over ready to respond to some ambiguous environmental stimulus as if it is dangerous. A slight sound and it's someone out to get. Right? Have you all experienced this? Yes? Anyone? Okay. Now, what is happening is our current needs, our biological needs, are distorting our process of perception to make it possible to get what we currently need in life. And that makes good biological sense. For example, if you're hungry, you become more sensitive to environmental cues for food. There is a proverb that says that what bread looks like depends on whether or not you're hungry. You'll see in a moment why this is important. But in any case, it is a property of the brains that we now have. Uh, another factor that determines what we perceive is expectation. So, do you have green tennis balls here? No, right now. Um, if you see uh, something uh, let's see, an object that you're not sure what it is, you will interpret what it is based on where it is, its context. Now, we will see some examples of this shortly. It is because that we use our understanding of how the world has worked in the past if we don't have information that contradicts it. So I'm going to ask you to do a little experiment now. Now, I'm going to want everybody to shut their eyes for just a minute or so and be prepared to look at, to point in two directions. The first, but you have to do this after you shut your eyes. Okay. We'll, we'll wait, I'll set up the whole thing and then we'll have to do okay? And I'm going to want you to, uh, once you have shut your eyes, to point to me and then to the door that you came in. But don't look at it. Okay, all right. And then when Marcia says to open your eyes in a moment, you'll do so. So please shut your eyes and point in the two directions. Yes. I see one. Everyone points now. Yes, finger. Point once at me and once at the door. Everybody shut your eyes and point at me and at the door. All right. Now. Everybody's pointing at the door, correct? But not at me. Why not? Because the door, did anyone doubt that the door was there? No, you knew it was there, even though you didn't see it and had no sensory information telling you that it was. But you didn't say, well, wait a minute, I'm not sure. As far as the door was, you were absolutely certain. Now, as for me, you might not have been so certain because you know that people like me could get up and walk away. And... The fact that I did so illustrates the importance of using sensory input if it's available because it gives you the most up-to-date information about the world. So it tells you that there is a tiger suddenly and I run that way. Whereas if the sensory information is not available, you use what you already know about the way the world is. Okay? 
So, now let us understand what happens in dreaming. To understand dreaming, we have to first of all understand the state of the organism in sleep. Sleep is an adaptation of uh, all higher organisms on Earth to the very special circumstances of Earth. Um, for most places on the planet and in most times of the year, there's a big difference between the dark side of the night and the light side of the day. And those uh, animals that are adapted to use vision are going to be active in the light. And conversely, those that use the sense of smell will be active at night. Just ask yourself, if you were in the jungle in the middle of the night, wandering around, would you be more likely to get what you want or what you don't want? So, creatures like the mouse sleep in the daytime and are active at night. So, we see sleep as an adaptation to the dark or light cycle, so for efficiency and safety. So, it requ basically, sleep keeps us safe in our tree or our cave or our burrow or our bedroom. Uh, instead of out acting in the world at a time where we're not likely to succeed. So now, with mammals, we have a new form of sleep that evolved that helped uh, the early development. With live birth of mammals required what is called REM sleep or paradoxical sleep. This is the phase of sleep in which dreaming occurs. But its biological function can be seen by looking at the distribution, how much REM sleep there is, per day across the life cycle. At birth, there is something like 80%. Three quarters of our time is in REM sleep. Whereas the two months before birth, it is 100% REM sleep. At adulthood, it drops off to, say, 20%. So you see that the place that it matters the most is in early development of the brain. So it is a state of the organism that developed to activate the brain at a time that the organism is not in contact with the external world, in the womb, for example. So its purpose seems to allow the brain to develop and to unfold the genetic programming. But once our brains have grown and developed, it doesn't go away entirely. And the probable reason for that is that uh, you know, if you left your car in the garage or on the street throughout the long winter, it would not start up very well in the spring. So REM sleep appears throughout the night in a way that increases as the night goes on. And therefore, the probable reason for it is to prepare us for being alert and awake when the sun comes up and we're ready to wake up. Some of you may know what it's like to be awakened early in the night and to be very confused and not know where you are. And that's what it would be like to sleep for a long night without having REM sleep. So now we have a state in which we are in sleep, isolated from the outside world, meaning that the sensory input is blocked and the motor output, the output of our muscles, is also blocked. But the brain is switched on. So what does it do? It does what biology and evolution designed it to do, which is to make a model of the world. And we just saw that if we don't have sensory information available, we still have a model of the world. We still know where the door is and how things work. And so what I believe we see in dreams is the same world modeling function that evolved for the purpose of survival in the waking state. However, it now is free of the requirements of sensory input. But now the secondary factors that bias perception while we were awake, motivation,